Hello. Uh, in my last video, I was um, showing how to implement a gRPC server and expose it to the uh, to be consumable by clients. And the use case was that uh, I was uh, fetching a Boston housing data set uh, and um, uh, splitting it into the validation, training, and test, uh, normalizing it, and uh, returning it back for the service. So in this video, I'll explain how to consume uh, the service uh, by another microservice, which would do a training, would consume the data from the first microservice and would uh, run the training and build the model. So without um, any delay, let's switch to uh, my desktop. And uh, let, let's, uh, let's see. So uh, first of all, um, to recap, uh, this is the uh, service from the last uh, from the last time data service. It uh, serves um, uh, logic which returns uh, uh, data to to the consumers. Okay, and uh, let's run it uh, so that we would be able to access it. And it's quite simple. We just um, uh, with Python we would. Uh, Run data service um, data service script like that, and the service is available. So data service is up, and now let's switch to another uh, service which is called training service. From here, we are consuming the data and uh, building the model. Right. So first of all, this uh, main. Uh, uh, I have a basic test uh, script uh, to initialize uh, training from here. Uh, so to make it more simple, I decided not to build any uh, REST API, but just um, uh, trigger the uh, service from the uh, basic uh, main function. This is where we create a training service and execute training function. Training service uh, is implemented with uh, class. And there's a helper uh, function to build the model. And in this class, we in, in the constructor, we built um, we open channel to our uh, data service to our gRPC server. And then we are using this client when we want to fetch data. So this is a fetch data function. And over here we are um, creating data controller class and passing as argument uh, our gRPC client and then uh, the call will, will, will be made inside data controller for that client. And in data controller, we uh, call fetch data function and pass uh, the information about the split, how data, how the training and test data should be split. Okay, and then this main function run training. So in the first uh, action, which it does, it actually calls this um, fetch data function and it calls uh, constructs data controller and calls fetch data from the data controller. And let's take a look uh, into fetch data inside data controller. So over here we are using uh, client, the gRPC client and constructing request and executing a function uh, prepare data through gRPC and getting the response. So prepare data function is the one which is implemented on gRPC server. So if I would go back to uh, data service, so this is the function which is implemented here, prepare data, and this function is defined in protobuf as well. So in, in a, and as a service method, prepare data, which gets request and get and, and producing response. Okay, let's go back to training service and Okay, so we uh, fetch data, then we the data is uh, represented in num NumPy array. Uh, it was uh, encoded on the server, sent uh, through gRPC, and on the client we need to encode it to build uh, arrays back. So we uh, decode the data, and then this uh, for target attributes, uh, we need to build up a uh, certain structure Again, when it's decoded, and if I would uh, feed it directly to a training, it uh, throws the error that uh, the structure is not right. That's because our model is uh, based on multi-model architecture, and the single model trains for uh, multiple targets. And 
then uh, we need to pass a array of like a tuple uh, array with um, uh, two elements. Then it works fine. Okay, so uh, data is produced, and then uh, as soon as we have the data, then uh, the the rest of the code is uh, kind of uh, regular code that you would use for any uh, to build any model with TensorFlow. You uh, we cre create optimizer, compile the model, uh, and execute training with model feed, and at the end we do some sort of evaluation. Okay, and. Yeah, actually, this um, the model uh, which I'm using here is uh, uh, Boston housing uh, prediction model, and I have it. If you want, I'll, I'll put it a link uh, under this YouTube video. Is uh, this, the implementation of the model itself is uh, explained in, in my blog post uh, over here? Multi output model with TensorFlow Keras functionality API, and the same model I'm using to uh here so the idea that i, I decided to split uh, data preparation in into first microservice and training in a second one and the key thing here is uh, how to pass the data between services and with grpc uh, there is no um, built-in type which would allow to pass uh, numpy array so for that reason on the server uh, um encoding uh, numpy array into byte array and when it's being received by the client i'm decoding it back uh, from byte array to numpy array and returning from the function and like i said before as soon as we have um, data structure then we feed it to for example model feed and we execute a training and also we're using validation data here to uh, feed into um, uh, evaluate function and let's see how it runs. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm I run a test script with main function, and this triggers the training, uh, and and triggers a call to the to the um, uh, gRPC server from from the client. Okay, and yeah, I could either run it directly from here, or I could say that. With Python, I would like to run training service test. It just makes a call to a client. Data is received, and now it runs training uh, 100 iterations. And we see that training is running fine. Uh, loss and uh, mean score error uh, values um, are returned. And training 100 iterations complete, and then we get um, some output from evaluation function. So we see that our uh, training microservice was able to communicate to uh, data uh, microservice, get the data, and run training. So in this example, we have two microservices for data preparation and for training, and those microservices are connected directly. So hopefully in future, I will be able to implement and show you how to implement uh, indirect communication where you would not have direct um, uh, call uh, encoded in one microservice to call another one. And yeah, so thanks uh, for watching. Uh, hopefully uh, this example shows you, uh, gives you a complete picture how to communicate with gRPC from server to the client and uh, how to consume data on 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 the client microservice uh, uses data to build the model. Uh, thanks and see you next time. Bye.